All right, guys, so I was tagged on Instagram so many times about these fake Kobe's. So I guess we're going to talk about them. Yo, what's good guys? My name's Chris. Welcome back to the official WearTesters.com YouTube channel. Today we got a detailed look and breakdown on a new brand alert. Uh, this is the Serious Players Only Player One. Yes, heavily inspired, as they put it, by the uh, the Kobe line or a few of them to be specific. But this is their first model, their debut model. Again, it's called the Player One. It's a shoe and brand based, I believe, in China. I bought two pairs, one of which will be going over to Alan. He'll be testing them, even though I don't, I'm not super confident in these, but I'll, I'll I'll explain that later so before you know we get started on anything this is the box that they come in so the box is quite nice uh, it's very sturdy which I think is awesome and you open it up and the shoes themselves come stuffed with this and then they come wrapped in the paper and that's it so just in case you guys were interested in that this is supposed to be a performance shoe though and most performance players myself included tend to not care about that type of thing unless the packaging is top-notch presentation and teaches you what you just purchased which it's half it's a great box but it doesn't teach you anything about the shoe luckily they do that online they have it not only on their website but they also have it all over their instagram so they've got this breakdown that you could see right here and it's basically an exploded view of the shoe where it depicts all of the names that they've given all of the little components that make up the footwear now right off the bat before we talk about any of their actual features yeah that's my my one thing is like i get inspiration i think that's cool like i did that too with like our own shoe we did a kobe colorway of the end of one and all of that stuff and i think that that's great but when inspiration becomes knockoff i don't i just don't think that's a good idea especially for a new brand especially for your debut model because this is exactly what americans talk trash about like this and I, I don't like this because there are great products that are Chinese-based brands. There are great products from American and international brands. And the majority of their stuff is made and manufactured overseas in China. A lot of stuff comes from there. Some of it great, some of it not. You know what I mean? There's levels to making things. Like it depends on how cheap you want your manufacturing to be. And that's how cheap a product will be. Whether that's cheap feeling or whatever. It doesn't even matter. But this right here is one of the reasons that gives American customers that edge. Being like, nah, it's a cheap knockoff from China. And it's like, bro, that sucks. You know what I mean? Because it didn't have to be. Like, they did a couple of things right. They did a number of things wrong. That being one of them. The, the design inspiration, that's even what you call it. This is damn near copy and paste. I don't agree with it. I think that's weird. However, I will say as a caveat, Nike opened the door for this. They just did. They're not producing Kobe Protros. If they are, like what, the last one was the, the GG pair? The Kobe 6 Protro? Where are the rest of them? She signed a new deal. Uh, Vanessa. So... I, I see plenty of NBA players getting their pairs, but where are the actual customers that pay for all of that stuff that allow the NBA guys to get their things? Where are the pairs for the public? I don't know. So again, Nike opened the door for this. I don't feel bad for Nike whatsoever. I do feel bad for Vanessa a little bit and the family and everything, because this could be taken one of two ways. One, as a sign of respect and tribute, or disrespect, you knock off my stuff. What the f***? You know what I mean? It just kind of depends on your perspective. So not only does the uh, full-on inspiration of the design come from the Kobe 11, which I just showed you right there, but the heel counter and the cushioning system as well. The heel counter looks very much like both of these to me. Like you can pick one, it doesn't matter, but you got the Kobe 7 and the Kobe 8s. All three of these are really good shoes with the exception of this one. And this one had so much potential. Old ass performance review, you could check it out if you were interested in like what went wrong there. But uh, yeah, so we've got these and then we've got this. This is the inside of this shoe so again we're going to talk about what they did good what they did bad and then we'll send a pair over to alan and hopefully he can get those tested and reviewed quickly so first things first the outsole looks like visually incredible and it feels also incredible when i take it onto our little stage there which is an actual basketball hardwood floor it comes with this little weird sticker on there i don't know i don't really know what that's about what is it saying it's saying don't use on steps or gravel like is that what that i think it means like don't put it into a hard edge because you might crack the plate maybe oh you're not going to just crack the plate you're going to tear the damn shoe in half but yes maybe i don't know so yeah so that's very weird very interesting the traction itself is a mixture between herringbone and nubs um the way that it feels like 
that ASMR. Uh, it feels hella grippy, very tacky. So in terms of grip, great. However, the type of rubber that they use, it's too soft. It's too cheap. This is a cost saving type of rubber and it's very unfortunate. So like this shoe right here is um, hollowed out. So the, the midsole is right here, right? And then this shoe right here, this is the midsole. So this rubber right here, you could fold the shoe up. That's normal when the midsole is not in there. You could do that with this too, minus the shank area. But the rubber here is thick and it's sturdy, even though it's thin and performance driven. So when I go to squeeze the shoe, I can bubble it a little bit, but that's it. But when I take this one, that's bad, okay? So very soft rubber to the point to where it's like indented in the heels of both of my shoes, like it like concaves in and everything like that. So as far as its performance goes, I'm sure it'll grip a floor really, really nicely, but I don't think it's gonna last long and that's even indoors. So if you take these outdoors, consider them toast right off the bat. So I don't think that that's a good move on top of that when you're using the rubber to house the internal sections of the shoe. Um, it's also going to play into the support features of the shoe, even though there's a shank there that rubber is not supportive enough for serious players it's just not like you put this on an NBA guy and he's gonna blow through this shoe like Zion would now the shank plate in there feels like carbon fiber it's got a really thick thing on there or coating and everything I don't trust that it's real carbon fiber it just feels like it's strong like a carbon fiber but it does look funny it doesn't look like the Wade brand carbon fiber uh, it doesn't look like any of the carbon fiber or glass based carbon fiber that you see on any of these products feels a little cheaper but it does feel strong the one area though again where I think there's gonna be a problem is like right here is the shank somebody big enough with enough pressure that's gonna tear through the rubber with the rubber being that soft. It's just, it's not a good thing. Can you fold the shoe like that to the point where it's stressing the rubber that much once the midsole's in? So once the midsole's in, Oh, okay. Yeah, it's too soft. The rubber's too soft. Now, inside of that is something I find very interesting and it's the entire cushion setup. So obviously this guy right here is a drop-in. It looks very much like previous drop-ins that we've seen from Kobe's uh, line and things like that, but they name things themselves, which you can see on their product description with the blown up image and stuff like that. I will say that all of the names that they named everything to me sound dumb, okay? And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. It's just like, why did did you name it that when you could have just said what they are? So what we have here is an EVA drop-in and they're calling it Evan Long. If it's supposed to be EVA Lawn, there shouldn't be an N there, but now it looks like it's somebody's name, Evan Lawn. Yeah. I think that's very strange, um, but it is EVA. It feels okay, it's a little dense, like something like this, which is just lunar. It feels kind of similar, but not exactly. Definitely doesn't feel like something like this, where it's like soft and kind of bouncy and things like that, or like the React drop-ins. Obviously, those are a little bit more bouncy too. So this just feels like regular EVA. However, where they switch things up is underneath it. Like there's additional pads of cushion, which is cool. Like this is dope. Not only that, this reminds me a lot of the original Kobe stuff. Long before there were Protros, there would be isolated cushion systems and things like that where they would call them met units or met bags and they'd be in the main strike zones of your player of your forefoot of your foot itself and that's what this reminds me of however it's all just like weirdly named stuff so yeah so there's evan lawn the drop in the white sections that you see which are basically i can't tell if they're etpu or if they're a p-bax because it's very similar stuff but it's one of the two and they're calling it popcon what the hell does that even mean and then the uh extra eva pads which are the little blue dots that you see they just call it straight up gum i'm assuming that the blue sections are more heavily rubber based types of foam whereas this is plastic based and then there's foam based again so you got tri-density layers that's not even the full extent of the cushion that they use when i pulled this out there's also this layer of again i don't know if it's pbax or if it's an etpu it could be either one but yeah there's another layer of cushion underneath this shoe it's very interesting so i really like that i think that's a really cool concept now the upper obviously looks very similar to Flywire and Flyknit and engineered mesh and everything like that and it's it's kind of like it it's kind of not so the main shell of the shoe or the main body of the shoe is actually plastic you just can't see it and then they glue the fabric or the threading onto it so there's the threading being made which they actually show on their Instagram which I found fascinating I just love seeing how it's made things you know what I mean whether we're talking about like the actual show how it's made and they make really weird things that even bowling pins I found to be awesome. Nerd alert! What? 
But anyways, watching shoes be made though is really cool because I'm totally into shoes. So I really like that, but that's what it is. It's a plastic shell with threading on top and then they're glued or heat welded together. Obviously there's more fuse in the high wear areas and stress zones like the lacing and the toe rands. I think those are all perfect things to do. On top of that, the materials, even though they are plastic, they don't feel crazy stiff like the Kyrie eights that we just reviewed. Those feel awful on foot, but this one is nice and soft, man. Like this that's dope. The back section feels like synthetic nubuck and everything like that. It actually has a really cool texture to it. So I really like that. It makes it feel and look like an actual genuine leather. Really nice one on top of that. Obviously their player logos are everywhere. So you got one on the tongue, you got one on the medial ankle. They also say their brand name etched into the heel counter and everything. And again, the heel counter kind of is just like these two things. Now, as far as the fit is concerned, that's the other thing that I don't love. They do fit true to size lengthwise. So when they're on my feet from heel to toe feels perfect. It feels very similar to a Kobe, which I really like. However, this section right here where like the rest of your toes are feels like it's just pushing my toes over. Like it's like a reverse bunion. Yeah. I don't know if it's because they recommend a size up or whatever, because again, lengthwise, they feel okay. I personally don't feel safe in basketball shoes that don't feel one-to-one. -one. I always feel like there's too much room and then there's room for error. So if I step on somebody's foot or whatever, like my foot can shift inside the shoe and then boom, I roll my ankle, not happening. So yeah, so I don't love the way that they fit. Again, they are true to size lengthwise. It just feels real funny on the rest of my toes. I, I can't tell if it's this and that this is too much cupping. You know what I mean? Like I had that problem. That was with these, like they, my feet up hardcore to the point to where I had to cut off sections of the drop-in to make them playable without rubbing my feet raw. So I'm wondering if that's the same thing, but I never had a problem with this one and they do the same thing. So again, I don't know. Maybe it could be uh, the type of foam. Maybe it's too firm. I have no idea. All I'm saying is that that's how they fit me and I hope that they don't fit other people like that. Now the price of the shoe is 158 US dollars plus shipping. Obviously you can find something for cheaper uh, stateside. You can go to any Nike outlet and get something for, I mean, it's discounted plus an additional 30% off. We all know how those things work right about now, right? It's like, I don't have to explain how I can't let's work. So yeah, so you go there, you can find a last year model discounted and you can get a great product for a great price. So if you were really trying to like supplement your I need Kobe's mood, then this could be a viable option for you with the one caveat of just be careful for that rubber, man. The rubber feels way too soft. It doesn't feel like actual basketball shoe type of rubber. So with all that being said, this is the serious players only player one. Am I very pleased with the product? Mm -hmm. The rubber obviously needs to be better. The fit could be a little better. Change the lingo of some of your stuff. It doesn't need to be named that way. Just say, say this is PBAX, this is ETPU, this is EVA. Yada, yada, yada. Keep it simple. But yeah, sound off below. Let us know what you think about these down below in the comment section. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for all the support. We'll catch you on the next one. So until then, have a good one.